Want to get into the video game industry, but don't know where to start? Well, with a little help from Smite developer Hi-Rez Studios, we're here to give you some tips for getting your dream job. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're bringing you the top 10 tips for getting into the gaming industry. Number 10, check your ego at the door. I know there's a few of you out there that are desperate to see your best idea come to reality, and also dream about getting perfect 10 review scores and winning numerous Game of the Year awards on your first game. But believe us, that is not a likely scenario. One of the biggest misconceptions about video games is thinking that cool concepts alone make a great game. Don't knock on a developer's door saying that you've got the best idea. You won't have been the first. Your great idea has probably been thought of before. We have too many ideas in the game industry. It's all about whether you can execute them well. Number nine, attend developers' conferences. While it's not a one-size-fits-all solution for getting in the door, dev conferences can serve as a good way to get other developers to know you. Some conferences may even have panels or workshops on what certain companies are looking for. However, it is absolutely essential that you actually have something to prove before you start rubbing shoulders with some of the industry's best. And don't get discouraged if you don't leave with a killer lead. They go to like GDC or any of these conferences and they kind of put all of their eggs in the networking basket like, oh, I'm gonna meet the right person and that's gonna get me this job. It's like, that works, yes. Sometimes it is the people you know. But a lot of the times, you really need to be able to prove with that networking that you are the right person for that job. Number eight, apply as a QA tester. Often the most common entry-level role you can get when starting out is applying for quality assurance roles. Quality assurance can be a great entry path into the game industry. It's basically testing, and uh, there's a lot of people that want to test video games, but they have to realize that it's different from playing video games. You're actually playing the game in order to break the game. Essentially, if you're one of those people who likes to push the game to their limits and try to do things you probably shouldn't be doing, this might be a good job for you. A lot of higher profile game developers started out in QA and worked their way up, making this a choice idea for getting your foot in the door. You're basically producing bug reports so that the programmers and the artists can find what you detected, reliably reproduce it, and then fix it. Number seven, build an online portfolio. Let's see, I'm 1.8 meters tall, ruggedly handsome, chiseled abs, amazing hair. This should be a no-brainer, especially if you're an artist, but getting a portfolio or a showreel online that's easy to access by anyone is really important for getting any job in the industry. It doesn't matter if all the content isn't game-related, as employers are often looking to see if you are skilled and well-experienced enough to handle the work. A well-organized portfolio and resume is an easy way to convey this. From an art perspective, it's really all about your portfolio. It's the quality of the work. It doesn't really matter how you got there, whether it was from art school or self-taught. It's all about a really awesome portfolio that'll just blow away an employer. Number six, internships and practical experience. This is very good if you're just starting out or you need to get the feel of working with a team. Internships might not be great for your morale since you won't be getting paid but it certainly helps for all those job listings that say you need two to three years of experience. Yes, taking up internships and getting work experience seems like something that can go with any field, but it's just as relevant here as in any other real world job. While there are horror stories of interns being overworked for no financial reward, ideally you'll be in the right place when they start looking to fill paying positions. One thing I would tell anyone looking to get in the game industry is that you have to be insanely just persistent and tenacious. You cannot give up after the first no, you have to just never give up. Doesn't matter, how, doesn't matter how many no's you get. Number five, get into social media. Thank you all so much for supporting us and continuing to support us watching us on YouTube and on Twitch. This one is for all you who'd prefer to get a job as a video game journalist, reviewer, or live streamer. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, set yourself up with an online presence for greater recognition. You can and should alternatively write lots of blogs on gaming and don't stop, because whether it's on gaming news, reviews, or opinions in the industry, the more you write, the better you'll get at it. For more on live streaming, check out our video on top 10 ways to make money playing video games. It, there's several things that can make you unique and different from a streamer, but you don't just wanna be a bland, boring personality that's mediocre at the game. You're not gonna get viewers that way. Number four, specialize in your field. One of the biggest mistakes you can make in a job interview is to say that you'll do anything. Remember, you're not the only one going for that job. It's usually about sticking to one field and being the best at it, not just doing everything sort of averagely. Make sure you know what you want to do when you go in for your interview. Don't kind of say that you could do multiple things or that you're a jack of all trades. No one's really looking for someone to do multiple things out the gate. They want to know what you can specialize in. The main fields for any development team are usually art design, programming, and game design. You'll basically need to pick one and focus the best you can. 
Though with game design, yeah, best to hear it for yourself. Game design is tough. You usually have to claw your way in and then eventually move across to uh, doing design. Number three, a college education. These days, many colleges offer degrees in the fundamentals of game design, programming, and the expectations you'll meet in your career. It's especially important to get a college degree if you want to get into programming, as most employers will require you to be familiar in common programming languages. However, people working in the industry come from a variety of academic backgrounds, not just programming or game design. Higher education clearly makes you a better candidate for a number of reasons. You get better writing, better social skills, better time management ability, more school probably won't hurt your chances. I'd encourage people to go to the best school that they can and really try to get good grades because that helps you get your foot in the door. It helps your resume stand ahead. Number two, start making games. Mm, this is a video game I'm making. It's kind of like a side project. Oh, good for you, honey. Even if it's in your spare time, it's just a hobby, or starting a small studio with your friends and college classmates, if you want to start making games, you better start doing it now. Honestly, there is no better teacher to highlight your strengths and weaknesses than yourself. Your first project will probably suck, yes, but it's all part of the learning experience. The internet is awash with tools and tutorials that can help you make your first game, many of them absolutely free or for a very reasonable sum. If you can include a small game or demo in your portfolio, that's certainly going to earn you extra points with employers and will help demonstrate your dedication, which of course leads to our number one tip. If you're not willing to sacrifice your weekends and nights, then someone else is going to and they're gonna step on there and make sure that you don't get that job. Number one, be dedicated, like really dedicated. It's a really cutthroat industry out there. Everyone wants to make video games. You're potentially looking at 70 hour work weeks on average. So be sure that you're absolutely passionate about making games. Also, be ready to move to another state or even another country when going to your next job with only a few months notice, especially if there's nothing in your immediate vicinity. You might be in one part of the country, maybe someone says yes to you, but they're like a couple states over. Go take that job. You need that experience. That's the most important thing. If you aren't willing to put in the work, chances are there's someone else who will. And perhaps most importantly, always be willing to admit that you screwed up. Because if you think your boss is a tough critic, wait till you start hearing from consumers. Always work harder than the person next to you, even if it's yourself. You are never working hard enough. I do 60, 70 hour weeks on the normal. Do you agree with our list? Oh, now be honest, Apollo. Are you as thick as you look? Is there any other advice you'd be willing to give anyone who wants to start making video games? Don't be a dick. There's a good tip. All right. There's a good tip. Yeah. For more informative top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Ah! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.